Let's turn down the lights and throw another log on the fire. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Well, the Poe Museum really started out in 1906 with the idea of building a statue of Poe in Richmond. And Poe had grown up here, he spent more of his life here than any other city he considered his hometown. He referred to himself as a Virginian, but the city didn't really claim him. They didn't fund a statue. Even the newspaper said that Poe wrote some nice poetry, but his character wasn't worthy of being remembered. So this group, the Poe Foundation, they didn't get their statue. They decided to build an international Poe Museum to house their collection of things that Poe used to own, like his desk and chair and walking stick. They thought the perfect place in all of Richmond for the International Poe Museum was five blocks from here, the corner of 15th and Main. It's the site of the Southern Literary Messenger, the magazine where Poe began his career in journalism. Published his first horror story there, published his only novel. But then the city disagreed again, and they decided to condemn the building and demolish it so they could widen 15th Street. Then after they demolished it, they widened 14th Street instead. So the Poe Foundation was out of building, but they saved the bricks and the granite and the lumber and all the building materials from hinges and doorknobs and brought them five blocks down the street to an old junkyard and constructed a garden that would bring Poe's poetry to life. They based an entire garden on Poe's poem to one in paradise. Thou wast to me love all for which my soul did pine, a green isle on the sea love, a fountain and a shrine, all wreath and fairy fruits and flowers, and all the flowers were mine. So they landscaped a whole garden, they used soil from Poe's mother's grave, ivy that was growing in Poe's mother's grave, they saved flowers and trees and shrubs that Poe had mentioned in his poems and short stories, and tried to plant as mim here as they could so they could really bring to life an immersive Poe environment. To this day, we still receive new artifacts sent to us from Poe's relatives and descendants of Poe's friends and family, descendants of his fiancés. So the collection is continuing to grow and it's your one stop for all things Poe. A lock of Poe's hair to his nail file to manuscripts and first editions and letters and portraits of Poe. To immerse yourself into Poe's world, to take a trip back to Poe's time and this is the closest thing you have to meeting Edgar Allan Poe in the flesh, to getting to know him. So we're continuing to build up this collection as a resource, not just for us today, but for generations to come. Because we value the power of the written word, and this is a place where the written word really is king, and this is somewhere where the power of the imagination is encouraged. About 15 years ago, the Poe Museum had roughly 11,000 visitors a year. Now we're up to about 30,000 visitors a year. Our website has 1.6 million unique visitors a year. The museum's collections have grown to include Poe's vest and his socks that came directly from a descendant of Poe's uncle, Henry Herring. We have his trunk, we have the key found in his pocket after his death. We have a rare daguerreotype of Poe taken a year before his death. We very recently discovered the only known copy in Poe's handwriting of his poem, To Helen. We have an ambitious exhibit schedule. One of our buildings is devoted just to changing exhibits. We change out the exhibits in that building every month. And each month from April through October, we have an unhappy hour. Because you can't have a happy hour at the Poe Museum. We have an unhappy hour. So we're always trying to come up with new ways to make Poe's works accessible. And our mission is to interpret the life and influence of Edgar Allan Poe for the education and enjoyment of a global audience. Yes, every summer we host an Edgar Allan Poe Young Writers Conference and students from across the country come and spend a week out of their summer to really become immersed and inspired in the works of Edgar Allan Poe. They take daily workshops with professional writers, editors, poets, novelists, playwrights, and to really help create a writing community and to show them that writing can not only be a lifestyle but a career. That's one of the great legacies of the Poe Museum is that we can help inspire tomorrow's great writers and great thinkers and great artists. And the museum has always attracted artists who have come here to be inspired and to share their love of literature with the world. 
So we're continuing to find new ways to interpret Poe's works through visual arts, through cinema, through theater, through dance, new ways to inspire today's artist and tomorrow's artist. And that's really what modern art is all about. This whole idea of art constantly reinventing and reinvigorating itself. And we think that the Poe Museum, just like Poe's work has been, could be a catalyst for inspiring new work and new ideas. And I think that's one of the reasons that the Poe Museum is still relevant today. Danny. Hi. Hey, Danny. When Poe was writing, he said that what he really valued was originality and invention. He said that no two of my stories will be alike. I'm going to keep inventing new things. So he invented the detective story. He pioneered the science fiction genre, the tale of psychological terror. He even wrote a few gothic stories. Poe is going to continue to matter for a thousand years because he's writing about universal, timeless themes. He's writing about what really makes people tick. He's a writer who's not afraid to explore the dark recesses of the human mind, but to really try to capture in words the whole human experience from love and joy to tragedy to terror. And people who continue to read Poe's works and continue to be impacted by Poe's works because they're entertaining. It's just fun to read about the Telltale Heart or the Casca Montiato. There's a reason these stories are still being read today and still inspiring artists and performers. It's because they're just fun reads, and that's why Poe's going to survive. It's many, many a year ago.